so who helped black activists travel to to Britain, to Ireland, and particularly to Kirklees? And it's a very good question, and it depends on which activists uh, that we're talking about. So the activists were supported by different abolitionists, various societies. Sometimes they actually re represented no party or society at all. And there were some activists who uh, depended on the financial sale of their autobiographies at the end of these anti-slavery meetings to um, carry on lecturing, to go to from place to place to catch um, a bus, to catch a, a train um, carriage, again, depending on um, what area, and what time period that we're talking about. So activists like Moses Roper would hold numerous hundreds, thousands of anti-slavery meetings around the country and depended on um, selling or the sales from um, his autobiography at the end of those meetings. Uh, again, so he could travel from one place to another. Uh, and that was uh, similarly the case with another activist, Jacob D. Green, who actually published his autobiography uh, in Huddersfield. Um, in the early 1860s, uh, which is a really important um, and exciting thing for, uh, for British history, but of course, uh, Huddersfield and Kirklees history. So these donations at the end of anti-slavery meetings were very, very important for um, the financial survival of a lot of these abolitionists. There were other activists who were supported by specific abolitionists, or they represented a particular anti-slavery society. So um, the American Anti-Slavery Society uh, out of Boston, Massachusetts, was led by the white radical abolitionist William Lloyd Garrison. Uh, it's a very famous um, society uh, in the US and today as well. And uh, that society sometimes um, gathered donations to pay for steamship crossings over to Britain in the first place. And they had connections to a lot of British and Irish abolitionists in hubs like Bristol and um, Manchester, Leeds, uh, Edinburgh, uh, Belfast, Dublin, uh, as well as, of course, London. So there are these sort of hubs, these networks of, of abolitionists that could, again, raise money for a specific activist, um, as well as um, donating their own money to, uh, to the cause as well. So we also have activists like James Watkins who visited Kirklees throughout the 1850s and early 1860s as well. And he specifically went through uh, religious networks like the Wesleyan Methodist uh, network across Britain. And these ministers would work with James Watkins and then they would recommend him to other ministers in other places. Um, again, thinking about this, this concept of a network and a hub, and that really helped um, James Watkins travel in particular sort of around uh, around Britain and I mentioned Moses Roper earlier he relied a lot on non-conformist networks as well um, so uh, non-conformist churches and, and chapels um, uh, and institutions around the country and lastly Frederick Douglass uh, the pioneering social justice activist who again many of you uh, will hopefully know he visited Kirklees uh, twice in the 1840s and the 1850s and Frederick Douglass was supported by William Lloyd Garrison, who I mentioned uh, a second ago, and he worked with a lot of Garrison's friends who were based in Britain uh, and who helped uh, him travel around.